If you're looking to shape up in preparation for the SAT, this video will cover geometry and trigonometry on the exam. Just a reminder to get the most out of this study video, make sure to pause and attempt each question by yourself first. After this video, you're gonna have all the right angles to do your best on the SAT. We'll start with some easy stuff. So first question, they're giving us some information saying that AB equals AC on this triangle. And right off the bat, we should identify that as isosceles. This is an isosceles triangle. So if you have two equal sides, it means you also have two equal angles at the bottom. And then it tells us that ABC, which is this angle here, is 67 degrees, which means angle C has to be 67 degrees. And then it wants to know the value of X, which is our leftover angle. We know there's 180 degrees in a triangle and then we just have to subtract 67 times 2 see what is that 120 134 which leaves us with 46 and indeed there's an answer right there Here's another easy one dealing with lines and angles. It's telling us that these two lines are parallel, which we can kind of tell visually, but you do need that proof. So this line and this line, it's telling us that Y is 20 degrees and Z is 60 degrees. You're always gonna wanna label anything they give you. What's the value of X? Well, in case you weren't aware, because these lines are parallel, they're essentially forming the same exact angles with this triangle. So if y is 20, this angle over here is also going to be 20. Make sense? And because of that, we'll do the same thing. We'll start with 180. Time we're subtracting 60 and 20, which is 80, which means x is going to be 100. Let's do one more easy question. I like to always start with the main question. So it's saying, which of the following is closest to the height of the cherry tree? So we know that's our goal. The height of the cherry tree is what we're looking for. Now let's look at the context. So Washington Monument casts a shadow that's 300 feet long. So let's draw this out. This is gonna be the monument. And then the shadow would go across the ground. So it'd be like this, yeah? 300 feet long. So we've got a little bit of a triangle here. At the same time, near by tree cast a shadow that is 16 feet long. So then we've got a tree, that's my tree, and this is only 16 foot shadow. But basically, because it's the same time of day, they're casting the same angle of shadow, and we're looking at two similar triangles. Similar triangles meaning they are different in size, but they have the same angles, and they are proportional. Proportional meaning the small triangle here is 16 out of 300 of the big triangle. And since it's telling us that the Washington Monument is 555 feet tall, so basically this is 555, we're going to stick that in the denominator since the, the big triangle was in the denominator over here. And then we're trying to figure out what this is. So from here, we can just cross multiply. That's when we multiply our diagonals. So 300x equals 16 times 555. I am going to do the numbers on my calculator real quick. That becomes 300x equals 8880 divided by 300. X is going to equal 29.6. Which of these answers is closest to 29.6? 30. All right, on to three medium questions. The triangle, we're looking for the value of A. Basically, we've got two sides of a triangle. We need the third. Whenever this is the case, you could always look for Pythagorean triples. Like, is it a three, four, five triangle? Is it a five, 12, 13? I'm not seeing that here. So we'll just go ahead and set it up using the Pythagorean theorem being A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So for A squared, we'll actually just use A since it is one of the legs. Because remember, C needs to be the hypotenuse. And then B would be six because that's the other leg. Legs being the sides that are not the hypotenuse. And then 21 would be our hypotenuse, so that's C. And I'll write the model formula up here as well, so you know what I'm plugging stuff into. And I'm tempted to, you know, turn six into 36 and everything, but take a look at the answer choices. It looks like six squared is intact for some of these answers. So let's keep 21 squared and six squared just as they are uh, and just say a squared equals 21 squared minus six squared. So that's just me subtracting six squared from both sides. And then to get a by itself, we would square root all that stuff. So 21 squared minus six squared. And is that an answer? Uh, yeah, that's a, so that's our answer. 
Here's another isosceles triangle problem. We already talked about how this means there's two of the same side, right? And it's telling us that the measure of angle A is 50. So let's just imagine this thing. Let's pretend that I drew this really well and we're dealing with an isosceles triangle. And there's a couple different ways we could think about it because it's only telling us the measure of A. So either this could be A, so this could be 50 degrees, or these could both be 50 degrees. And I guess we could... Uh, write the outcome if that were the case. So if these were both 50 degrees, we would have 180 minus 100, which means this would be 80 degrees. We'll call this our blue scenario. And then the pink scenario would be the top is 50 degrees. So we have 180 minus 50, that's 130 divided by two, both of these guys would have to be 65 degrees. So we got our pink scenario and our blue scenario. Again, just because it's not telling us which angle is A. So which of the following is not a possible measure of angle B? So we have in our chart here 80, we have in our chart 65, we have in our chart 50, which means the answer is D because that's the only thing that doesn't exist in either scenario. For the last medium difficulty question, we've got a circle question, which is rare. Usually these are difficult. So let's see. It's telling us that it has a radius of 5 and a center of negative 8, 6. So basically, we know the equation for this circle, uh, as long as you know what the circle formula is, which would be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. R is the radius. Uh, HK is the center of the circle. So if we plug that in, we would have X, because it's minus in our formula, we have to flip it, right? So if it's minus, then a negative becomes a positive, a positive becomes a negative. So, oh, and I should have mentioned H is the X value, K is the Y value. So the x value is negative 8, which means x not minus 8, but plus 8, because we're flipping it, plus y minus 6 squared equals 5 squared, a.k.a. 25. All right, let's see if that exists. Um, a is not it. x plus 8 squared, y minus 6 squared. Boom, it's b. Our first hard question here is also a circle question. And it looks like it gives us the equation, so we know a lot. We know that the radius is going to be 4, because 4 squared is 16. We know that the center of the circle is 6, comma, negative 5. Um, again, because of that same circle equation that we just talked about in the last question. And it's telling us that there's a point on the circle, and it's telling us that PQ is a diameter of the circle, so... I'm immediately thinking we could use like the, the distance formula, maybe the midpoint formula, something like that. But because we have Desmos, let's just visualize things with Desmos real quick and see if that gives us bearings and maybe we can find a shortcut. So here's the circle that I just plugged in. And let's plug in that point they gave us as well. So that was 10, negative 5. So that's our P, right? And then it's asking us if we create a diameter, basically we go all the way across the circle in a straight line from this point, what would be Q? Well, we know that the center of the circle is negative 5, so it's going to have to stay on negative 5, right? So it's either going to be A or C. And if the radius is 4, the diameter is 8. So what's 10 minus 8? 10 minus 8 is 2. And we can just double check to make sure that that works. 2, negative 5 is the other point. And I'll be darned. Look at that. It is also right there on the circle. And we know it goes through the center, negative 5. So it is indeed a diameter. So our answer is A. All right, this is listed as a difficult problem as well. And it looks like we're dealing with a rectangle, but it also says we're looking at the rectangle's diagonal, which means we're actually dealing with a triangle. Let me draw it for you, and I'll show you what I mean. 
So we have our rectangle, and then a diagonal is basically a line that goes from one corner to the other. So that's our diagonal, and it's saying that the diagonal is three times the square root of 17. It's telling us the length of the shorter side is three. And then it wants to know what is the length of the rectangle's longer side. So when it comes down to it, we're just looking at the Pythagorean theorem again. So let's write that formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to plug it in again. This time, uh, we'll just say 3 is a, so 9, that's 3 squared, right? 3 squared is 9, plus b squared equals... And then 3 root 17 is our C. And I'm going to zoom in here, actually, so that we can get a better look. All right, and remember, all of this is squared. So let's unpack this real quick. So if we can distribute this. These, these terms are being multiplied by each other, and we can distribute them to the power of 2. So let's do 3 squared is 9. And then the square root of 17 squared is, well, 17. So 9 times 17, I guess 10 times 17 would be 170. So then what's 170 minus 17? That would be 153. And then over here, we still have b squared. We have 9. Uh, so let's subtract that 9. So then b squared equals 144. And that's actually a number that we should be familiar with, uh, hopefully, right? If the square root of 144, 144 is a gross number. So b, let me scroll down here, b equals 12. And yeah, that would be our answer, 12. All right, our last difficult question here is going to be a Sokotoa question. That is sine, cosine, tangent. It's mentioning tangent, right? So let's just get our heads around this real quick. A refresher, Sokotoa. So ka toa is going to represent fractions. Basically, so means if we're dealing with sine, then we're looking at opposite over adjacent, right? So the first letter is either sine, cosine, or tangent, and then the next two letters are a fraction where the letter coming first is the numerator, and then the third letter is the denominator. So if we're looking at tangent, which we are, it would be tangent equals opposite over opposite over adjacent. So in general, that's what's going on. Now, here there's actually quite a useful shortcut. Um, and I do like to visualize, so let's actually draw a triangle here. And we know it's a right triangle, so we're allowed to make it a right triangle. So... We'll just say that's our triangle, there's the right angle, and it says the tangent of one of the angles, so we'll just arbitrarily choose one. I'm going to go with this one down here. The tangent is square root of 3 over 3. Opposite would be way over here. Opposite means across the street, so that's our numerator, square root of 3, and then adjacent is right next to it. Um, and you might be thinking... Well, these are both right next to it, but one of them is the hypotenuse, and we don't want the hypotenuse, so it's going to be the leg, this one down here, which would be 3. The shortcut is, anytime you're talking about the tangent of an acute angle, the other acute angle is basically just going to have the reciprocal of that. So the rule is, the reciprocal would be our answer, 3 over square root of 3, you know, which is D, which will be our answer. But we could also just look and, and check to make sure that that's true. So if we were looking at this angle, opposite is 3, right, across the street. Sorry, that was a terrible arrow. Across the street, 3. And then adjacent is square root of 3. So our answer is D. Try to memorize that, but if you have to, just draw it out and you'll be good to go. I do hope that you found these tips to be on point. But if you're looking to get even more serious about your SAT prep, I would definitely consider signing up for one of Revolution Prep's small group courses.
Our small group courses are designed for students who are more comfortable in a collaborative group environment. Courses are available with 12, 24, or 36 hours of expert instruction from one of our tutors. And each course comes with five full practice exams, detailed score reports breaking down exactly what you need to work on, and unlimited access to our video resources. Go ahead and use the link in the description to get signed up for a small group course today.